dimensions are measurements and I would call them skills. And it is done so, so the universe can understand its own creations within its vicinities and its own awareness of that in which it divided itself in. Now I do this as though there are like different levels and it's like a ladder, like from high to low, because that is just a way that we can understand it with our limited mind. But it is actually all just vibration. And vibration is determined by the measurement of the speed of certain energies. So this morning I was thinking that determinism is a good example to explain what these scales of the universe are. Suppose you're walking on the street and you see a handsome man or woman. Now my question is, do you choose to fall in love with this person? It seems that this person is a fit, chemically, on a soul level, sexually, emotionally. You just connect and you fall in love. And it most likely has to do with our inner energy that attracted the other person to mirror this energy that we are exploring and understanding better in its fullness to turn that into understood, explored wisdom. So you could say that it is already previously determined and you are watching out the timeline in which this energy created for what was going to happen. I call this evolution. Another example, when we think of creating artwork here in the third dimension, we are maneuvering in a moment, but aren't our expressions to a certain extent limited and determined by what we have already previously accumulated in our lives within the vicinity of what we are aware of in our third dimensional experience? Now, of course, this also has to do to which extent a person is connected to the imaginary realms, where creations are appearing and disappearing all the time, where it's dancing all the time. And these dances of energies that we have within our own story, in our own localized dream version of who we are and what we are playing out now, it lies in a different skill and dimension that is less affected by the density and the structure and the rules of our third dimension, which require us to do things more slowly, more thought out, more specific. So this means that most of our options are limited to this third dimensional plane when it comes to creating, unless you have transcended the threshold that holds you between this limited mind of our third dimensional being and the fifth and the sixth dimension, for example. Meaning that unless you can simultaneously embody and live as your fifth dimensional and sixth dimensional expression of your soul with at least more than 80% of your consciousness, you may get to create as the other beings who are fully incarnated in the fifth and the sixth dimension as an earth incarnate. So these dimensions are simply operating on a different scale of the same one universal's mind, which is thinking about itself, exploring itself with what is present in each divided dimension to understand itself in its own vicinity, to find and understand what is really there in its larger initial creation. So let's take an example of a specific dimension that we tend to speak of here as Earth incarnates, the sixth dimension, in whom the beings are responsible for a certain extent of possibilities and potential far beyond that we can ever grasp right now here with our limited mind. They are also responsible for creating the forms, the appearances, the geometry and the shapes that appear in our earth reality that we can comprehend and identify as for example an animal or a fruit. Like have you seen this magnificent like box jellyfishes like in the deep sea? Like have you seen how complex and beautiful they are? Because these are really animals that we don't generally like identify so much because they are like so beyond what we normally see like as the ordinary already export fishes or or you know like the chickens and goats that we see like normally in our awareness 
You cannot stop me thinking that they have been seated here from the sixth dimension and that they are introduced to Earth so subtly that we aren't even aware of it because our limited mind just can't really comprehend how beautifully orchestrated the introduction of these certain new shapes and beings onto our Earth really is. And if we take a look at our own human form, this body, in our recent past, the Neanderthals certainly disappeared and a new form, which is this one, suddenly appeared and is now roaming the Earth. There are many stories that claim that we are seeded initially by other dimensional beings who tend to be extraterrestrials. And it cannot stop me think that they have reached a certain level of mastery within their dimension that they can play and manipulate and can create new forms and expressions by manipulating the DNA and cells in which, for example, our body consists of, thus giving new life and new opportunity for there to be a new expression of a third dimensional being. So to come back to the initial understanding, energy is there to be used in different ways. Similarly, our emotions that come and go, the energy that flows and is in motion that appears in our container is also just energy. And what we can do with it is up to us. So the dimensions are skills, are measurements of to which extent the universe's mind can focus and be aware of what is in its surroundings to create and play with that, to evolve and to evolve means to understand itself. And it all started because the universe said, who am I? Now maybe that question will change one day and the universe will stop looking for itself. Maybe then this whole thing will stop. But for now, it seems to be really determined to understand itself. So let's continue understanding ourselves. Therefore, you can follow me. <laughs>